There is a lot of Christians die and sinner receive it healing. A lot of Christians go to heaven and sinner receive it healing with life and death problems. And that is an area that uh, has confused ministers, has confused uh, believers in the body of Christ when people they're praying for die. And it's like, God, why? And if you believe God is responsible, then you don't understand receiving. Because he's not responsible. He, Jesus didn't let us down. But there's a problem with the body of Christ when it comes to understanding and receiving. 1 Corinthians 4, 17 tells us there's a way of life in Christ. It's understanding his ways. And so it's one thing to pray, but I'll use the example of a lady one year that was, that was hurt because she had had eight friends and family members in a period of one year that had passed away. And she had prayed for every single one of them, and not a one of them lived. And now here's a person in her church is facing a life and death problem, and she lacks the confidence. She just she told you, I just don't have the faith to pray for. Them. And you know, I'll say it this way first of all. I'm not trying to be critical at all. I'm just trying to be very truthful. But to keep doing the same thing over and over and not getting results, something's wrong with that. And I'll say it this way. Then you can, in another way, to be very practical. What's a person's track record of getting results? You know, if, if you're not seeing consistency when it comes to the area of healing and getting results just in just a particular area, we're talking about healing right now, then if you're not seeing consistency, then if you're seeing inconsistency or you're seeing nothing, and that's, you know, and seeing nothing is, is the consistency you're experiencing, then your heart likes understanding that Jesus got results. But there's reasons why he got the results the way he did. I'm telling you, we're the ones that need to change. And change is good when you have Christ. It's good. And we change. We stop limiting Jesus. He can work more effectively through us. And we're the ones that need to change. Hmm. That little lady of mine. In fact, while I'm on that point, I'll bounce off that one of the other teachings where I talk about Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred make of the heart sick. Because there are believers in the body of Christ that have faced serious, not, not just healing. Now I'm going to move into the area of needing not just some healing, but I'll use the example of a young lady. There's more than one I'm thinking about. But one that um, she needed a miracle. There's a difference between miracles and healing. If they were one and the same in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and verse 10, you know what? God would have put them together. He wouldn't have them separated if they were one and the same. But there's a difference between a miracle and a difference between a person being healed. And this little lady, she didn't just need, she needs some healing. But she needs she need creative miracles. She has some serious deformities, some serious problems in her body. And she had a person that came up to her and told her this, and said that uh, when nothing was happening for her body, this person said, well, you just don't have enough faith. And she was a young Christian. She walked away feeling inadequate or feeling like something was wrong with her, like she was inferior in the body of Christ and, and felt this on the inside, like what's wrong? And, and just, you know, and I, my question to a person that would say such a thing to a person like that is this, okay, if you're going to make her responsible, what's your direct record? Mm -hmm. How many people just like her have you gotten healed with creative miracles? In other words, miracles <coughs> manifest. Or even in the area of healing, that'll last in people you pray for, how many got healed? What's your track record? What kind of results do you get? Jesus. Well, I tell you what, there's things like that that have hurt and wounded Christians on the inside and, and confused them and and um, boy, make them feel something's wrong with them or God's not doing it for some reason. And it's just based on speculation. It's not based on actual fact. And Jesus got results. But there's reasons why he got the results he did. I've, I've got teachings back there titled The Ministry of Jesus. I've got in a seminar and I've got first and second albums out there. You can open up the syllabus. In fact, both the syllabus stack are not books, just so no one's confused. Um, they're seminars and I teach through the syllabuses. The syllabus simply would just save you a lot of writing where you can take notes and because a lot of what I teach as far as the scriptures and things and the points are recorded in there. But um, but you can open up and look at the different areas because on the ministry of Jesus, it's a teaching on his life from the perspective of his ministry. And there's incredible wisdom, incredible insight when we study the life of Christ from the perspective of his ministry. I believe Jesus was a minister's ministry. I believe you won't know how to minister, go to the best. I believe we're supposed to be like him. We're disciples of Christ. Now, he's our example. And that there's some incredible wisdom and insight as, as I've studied his life. It's changed me as a minister. I can give you many different examples. But um, but that teaching, I believe, is very beneficial for people's hearts. 
and understanding different aspects and areas of ministry. I believe what's recorded in the scripture, and we know from John's gospel that there's a lot that wasn't recorded. Amen. John said, I suppose that everything Jesus did was recorded, there wouldn't be enough books to contain it. Contain it all. There's, you know, even Jesus may seem like he was here such a short time, but I know what I do in one year. This is eight years where I've been out, out on my own from Andrew's ministry. And, um, you know, in eight years now, I've been averaging being home two months out of the year each year. And so we've got 56,000 miles driving, not counting all the flying. We're doing more flying. We've got offices overseas in Europe because we do quite a bit in Europe. And then also here in the U.S., of course, we're from Colorado. And so we travel. We've been every state, but I think about three or four states. So... God's opened many doors for us, ministering all around, all around the U.S. and, and all around the world. And even now, more nations are opening up to us. And, and, we, and even a few months ago, we were in new nations as we were overseas. We were in, uh, let's see, of course, we've been in Ireland many times. But from there, we were in England, which we've been in the Channel Islands. We've been in Finland and Slovenia, new countries for us. It was just powerful, the things that we saw. But the nations is something God's pretty much put in our heart because I believe that Jesus wants to work through the body of Christ as a whole. And as a teacher, imparting practical truths is where my heart's at. Practical, practical truths that makes a difference in our ability to get results. But being discipled is very, very important in this area because it requires being a doer of the word. I believe we can deceive ourselves as the book of James says that we're not careful thinking you have something because you've heard something. But if you don't go through the process of putting into practice what you've been learning, what you're hearing, then, you, number one, you won't experience failure. Every ministry experiences failure. It's what you do with failure that makes a difference. If you turn to Jesus, then you'll change. You turn to yourself and consume your heart with yourself because, you see, as I've said before, all unbelief is always about us. If we turn to ourselves and let our, those circumstances communicate to us through our five senses, then in our own unique way we'll have unbelief established within our heart how we see it on the inside based on those circumstances and what they communicate to us. If you turn to Jesus, you'll change. You'll get answers. Awesome. We'll go through the process of putting into practice what we're learning and staying with it. Let the Holy Spirit be our teacher. It's powerful what will happen. I was going through much failure. There's times I could have given up, but if I had given up, there's a whole bunch of people that wouldn't have got their healing. Why? But I'm getting results today in ways I didn't used to. And I've seen powerful things happen. I remember the first person was flying. I remember the first person came out of a wheelchair. But I also remember back to the beginning the inconsistency I saw. Some people healed, other people not healed. I'm going to life and death situations where other people prayed and had got results, and I'm getting results. In areas that I used to be challenged as a minister, used to challenge me. But I changed. And now Jesus, He can work more effectively through me. Because our hearts stop letting Him when we change. Praise God. Mine. Well, I encourage you to, uh, there's a lot more to talk about. One no more teaching I'd recommend back there is um, um, myself and our Jesus. And there's not many left, so you, but you can also get it from off our website and download it or uh, through the ministry. But, um, a lot of people, it's either, it comes down to either this life is going to be about us or him. It's either me, myself, and our Jesus. And that's something the Lord gave me a while back concerning himself. And what he started speaking to me concerning himself. I believe receiving is about Jesus. The same way salvation is about Jesus. It's not about us. And receiving is based on Jesus Christ. When it comes to salvation and healing, because healing is part of the atonement. It happened at the cross. But... There is a difference, as we've spoken about before. There is a difference receiving salvation, receiving healing. Not with God. With Him, it's the same. It's with man and how man receives. Because there's a difference between the two. Because it's the life of Christ that you're receiving in both cases. But it's the place you're receiving. When you receive salvation, you're receiving the life of Christ in your spirit. You're born again experience with the Holy Spirit. Burst the life of Christ on the inside of you. But when you receive healing, you're receiving the life of Christ in your physical body. Not 